So this is part four in a series on whether or not stents help. <clears throat> this is going to cover uh, two articles, both in uh, the Mayo Clinic proceedings. The first is a follow-up on the COURAGE trials. It's not follow-up on the patients. It's following up on the doctors. What did the doctors do? What did the medical researchers do after COURAGE came out? You remember COURAGE was the trial that came out in 2007 in the New England Journal showing that, guess what? Stents don't help, <clears throat> uh, at least for stable coronary artery disease. So you would expect that the, um, the researchers would go in, they would examine the other studies around this just to make sure that there's not some flaw in this study. You'd expect debate. Um, and then assuming it was uh, true, you'd expect that stents to stop. Well, many of you are, I mean, you'd have to not be, you can't live in the U.S. right now and know a lot of the punchline to that story. Stents are going great guns. Um, <clears throat> but let's, maybe that type of stent is no longer being done. Let's just look at the, uh, uh, look at the article look, uh, and find out what, uh, what we see. This is Ford Brewer, but first an introduction. Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. Um, <clears throat> so, Mayo Clinic Proceedings said, look, that was a landmark study, the COURAGE trial, published in 2007 in the New England Journal. It said that um, stents don't really help for stable, uh, stable coronary disease. And in fact, <clears throat> According to most of them, and according to the uh, the COURAGE trial authors themselves, in 2004, when the study started, there were about a million stents done. 85% uh, of them were being done for stable coronary artery disease. In other words, according to, to their research, 85% of stents didn't help. Okay, <clears throat> so just a couple of brief components about uh, intro here. This is going to be a little bit longer video because we're going to get into some detail. Um, they repeated the point that we all know. Coronary artery disease is the leading cause of death. Um, we're making progress with prevention and uh, procedures, stents. Um, again, what the, the question is, is, do the stents help if you have stable disease or do the stents only help if you're having a heart attack and certain types of heart attack? And the answer is appearing to be maybe only the uh, certain types of heart attack. They go on to talk about how we're getting uh, an improvement, decrease in death rate associated with heart attack and, and stroke, mostly due to prevention, but also due to, uh, to some of this stenting process. And I think that's a... Uh, a valid assumption. Now, <clears throat> recent evidence does not indicate that, that stents, PCI, helps with stable disease. It's essential that pa patients are placed in medical management. This is where they're starting to go here. They're saying we are not doing effective medical management. We're going straight to the stent. And again, pardon me for ruining the and giving you the punchline too early, but uh, most people viewing this um, channel are in the U.S. Most, even if you're not in the U.S., that's still what's going on all over the world. We're jumping straight to a stent. The number of non-surgical coronary interventions continues to rise. Now, for them, the number was 758,000, at least a third of which were elective. Again, there's some argument regarding the statistic itself. Um, not much argument over the fact that there's a lot of inappropriate stents going in. Now, <clears throat> then they go on to talk about, okay, what did the medical uh, research, uh, what kind of debate happened here? Well, guess what? There's plenty of debate. There are a lot of people saying that the COURAGE trial was inaccurate. There were problems with it. Primarily, the, um, the outcomes for the folks that got the medical side 
of the of the treatment arm, the non PCI, the non stent arm. Um, had, uh, for some flaw, study flaws and study design issues, it, they, that was overrated. Then the others said, no, that's not. Again, that debate did not pan out. It, it was a good study. Um, <clears throat> so then the New England Journal itself weighed in on this, and um, they started publishing some uh, online surveys. Again, Doc started saying, look, the, the best solution is medical therapy, non-stent therapy. You have to ask the question, so why are we continuing to do so many stents? Okay, so in the, in the rest of this study, then uh, on the, in the Mayo Clinic uh, uh, journal, the Mayo Clinic Proceedings Journal, <clears throat> they go in and they look at all the other studies that have looked at similar issues, and there were there are a few. The AVERT study, which I've mentioned, RITA2, TIME, that's um, uh, medication with the elderly, MACE, um, SWISS2, and I mean SWISS, MASS2, uh, SWISS3, and again, of course, the COURAGE trial. They go into some detail on them. Again, the results of these studies are all pretty consistent. Minimal to no in advantage from stents. Uh, again, I'll put the uh, the link to this study on the uh, under the video so you can go read it for yourself and tell me if you think I'm misinterpreting something. Uh, I don't think that you will. Now, there's some interesting things. It's probably worth reading on their summary. Let me just go over that with you. <clears throat> Evidence indicates PCI does not decrease mortality or risk of MI, myocardial infarction, or heart attack, more than optimal lifestyle and medical treatment. In other words, stents don't help um, in patients with, with chronic, stable coronary artery disease. So after the COURAGE trial, it's apparent that a co conservative approach to, to patients is indeed our best first line of treatment, not the stent. The final word is, and this is a 2008 publication, this is what they're, uh, they're saying at that time. The final word is not that medical therapy is superior for all patients, but that optimizing medical and lifestyle therapy is... Uh, uh, the appropriate initial strategy, unless the patient has unstable, they have a heart attack uh, or disabling symptoms. They then go on to talk about some general stuff that we know, um, risk factors, hypercholesterolemia, endothelial dysfunction, uh, plaque disruption, thrombosis, inflammation. Again, this was known back in 2008. We are just now five, seven, 10 years later, beginning to understand how important uh, inflammation is. Um, <clears throat> current non-invasive therapy is unable to, prov to predict a uh, vulnerable plaque. If you have interest in that, we, I've done videos on finding that vulnerable plaque and why that doesn't work. That's a pipe dream. Um, <clears throat> The fact that most plaques responsible for coronary uh, disease are, are not, um, not obstructive. In other words, looking for obstruction in the heart or in the, in the neck is not going to predict a heart attack or stroke. Yet that's what we still continue to do. I mean, so there's a lot of information in here that's very clear that we've... Uh, I've been pounding the podium about for quite a while, and I'm not the only one. <clears throat> There's still much uh, room to improve actual implementation of op optimal medical therapy. That's the truth. Um, so again, conclusion, focus first on lifestyle and medical therapy, not on a stent. That was Mayo Clinic Proceedings in 2008. Let's jump to Mayo Clinic proceedings in uh, 2013. This is an interesting study. I'll give you, or, or it's a editorial. I'll give you a uh, 
the link to that as well. What they did on this one was they looked at medical therapies that had been disproven. And their question was, how long does it take for the standards to change, for people to quit using therapies like stents for stable coronary disease? They actually mentioned that one. That was one of their favorite topics. And again, I will uh, read to you a couple of things out of that. Two important, uh, Warner and, and Associates raised two important issues regarding our investigation of 146 different medical reversals. In other words, 100, this study, the original study discussed here in 2013, they looked at 200, 146 different medical things that were found not to work. The first question is, how long does it take how long do these practices persist in medic in clinical practice? Um, the answer was 10 years. It took 10 years to get a, um, a procedure that's found not to work out of the medical practice. Meanwhile, the people that are getting it for that 10 years are getting inappropriate therapy. Um, they go on to talk about the COURAGE trial. Uh, the, the use of percutaneous uh, coronary intervention, in other words, stents, in the COURAGE trial, uh, that decreased for a couple of years, it looked like, after it was first published in 2007. Then, <clears throat> although initial evidence suggested decreased use of stenting in the wake of the COURAGE study, more recent data suggest a resurgence of practice to pre-courage levels. In other words, now they're doing as many stents, inappropriate stents, as they were prior to the courage trials. Again, um, as you can tell, I'm passionate about this issue. We're getting way too many people stented and um, for very inappropriate reasons. So please take this information to your cardiologist, to your doc, um, <clears throat> and I'm sure I'll get uh, more hate mail, more hate comments, but uh, just look at the facts. I'm not saying this. The, um, the leading uh, groups in medicine, the, uh, the New England Journal, Mayo, they're saying, look, we're way overdoing stents. Thank you for your interest.